So good morning, brothers and sisters. As we return into the study of the 10,000, shall we ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance so that we may more clearly see the relevance of this symbol? Shall we pray? Okay. Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for the many blessings that you are providing us day by day. Father, we draw close to you because we know we need you. Help us now that even with our darkened minds, that we might more clearly understand that which you would have us to learn. Teach us, please. Prepare for the work that you would have us to do. Be with us now. Show us, Father, the relevance behind these symbols. Help us to understand clearly the message that you would have us to give. Be with us now. Direct us. May your spirit be with us. And as we assemble, we claim the promise that wherever two or more are gathered together, there you will be also. Be with us in this meeting. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, for just a moment, before we, we delve into the book of Ezekiel, I wish us to consider something from the early portion of this study. Now, when the admonition has been given to Barak, as we see here in Judges 4, verse 6, 46, of course, being a symbol that we are most aware of, because there's 46 years from 1798 to 1844. There are 46 pairs of chromosomes in the human body. And there probably are many other symbols of 46 that I'm not addressing. But this verse tells us, and she and Deborah sent and called Baron of Abinoam out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali and the children of Zebulun? Ten thousand. Ten being a test, also being a symbol of judgment, but a test definitely. What are the meanings of Naphtali and Zebulun? Naphtali is my struggle or struggling and Zebulun is his, his habitation. Am I correct? Right. So in a situation like this, is this representative of a struggle within the house of God? Is this I, Yeah, I think it could be. I didn't think of that until now, though. So the point being, what was the struggle within the house of God with the children of Israel? What do we see as their great struggle? Well, I don't know about them all, but I know Barak, even though he'd gotten the command from God and the assurance that God would be with him and he'd defeat the foes, he had to have con confirmation from Deborah and even asked her to come with him to battle. But was there not even a deeper struggle? Were the children of Israel willing 
to follow the very word of God. No, it doesn't seem like it. Were the children of Israel deciding to follow God implicitly, or were they choosing and struggling in following the idols of the nations around them? Yeah, well, it's just like today, it's just like internal and external idols that we battle with, right? I'm not disagreeing with that point, but I still think it's deeper than that. Okay. We, as a movement, have not chosen to fully follow the word of God. In this situation, as, as we were addressing Judges chapter 4, is not the command given to Barak very similar to that command that was given to publicize and disseminate the message about the destruction that would come upon Nashville? And it was a difficult situation to make that decision. And very few stood to make sure that this message went out. The church certainly didn't do it. There are those within the movement that questioned whether it was to go out. So there was a struggle within the house. There was a test that was being given. Now we have several other portions of these symbols that we still need to delve into, but we have this test that even today has had issues between many brothers and sisters that chose based upon the outcome of what happened on July 18th, 2020, that there are other brothers and sisters that they can't associate with because, well, we don't want to, we don't want to delve into chronology. We don't want to delve into this because it might be numerology. Yet, as Elder Jeff saw it, there was great light in this. This is a test. Are we willing to accept the very word of God? Or are we setting our own understandings above that? Are we still struggling within his habitation? Well, I know that some, some of us have trouble accept, accepting the chronology, but I've learned in my life, God never lets me go too far astray before he really reigns me back. And I figure if this is of God, then open my mind to receive it. And so I'm just going to pursue on and uh, just trust God that he is revealing light through the numbers, through the measures, whatever. I mean, they are there in the Bible for a good reason. And everything's supposed to be for these last days. So, and I, as I said to Colin, I said, I don't care if it's Balaam Vass giving the message. I'm looking at the message. I'm not looking at the messenger. <laughs> Okay, now we left off in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 45, verse 1. Moreover, when ye shall divide the land by lot, excuse me, moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, 
ye shall offer an oblation unto the Lord, and holy portion of the land. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. Now we are aware that the land had already been divided. Ezekiel has been in captivity. So what dividing is he speaking of? Why are you re referencing that he's already been in captivity? Well, I'm not sure what you're... Ezekiel speaking from Babylon, right? Yeah, he's speaking from Babylon. So he's talking about the future restoration. Right. But he's speaking of this future restoration in a symbolic manner. Yeah. Yeah, it's not literal. We're not expecting him to build, uh, that God's going to have another temple built on earth. That'd be a rejection of the gospel. So, when he is speaking of this dividing by lot of the land, he's giving reference to that which was in the past, but is soon to be in the future. He's giving reference to the lots that were cast for the different tribes. But yet we have an holy portion of the land. Was there ever a holy portion of the land under the original division of the promised land? No. So here we're dealing with something that is not of earth directly. This is symbolic with what is to come. Mm -hmm. Now, when we're looking at a length of five and 20,000 reeds, and the reed being 126 inches was that correct yeah then how would we express the five and twenty thousand the twenty five thousand in length according to what we understand right now well we could take it as some kind of measurement of time Okay. So 25,000 something. Well, twenty five thousand reads, if we multiply that by one twenty six, as we did the ten thousand, mm -hmm. would be. 3,150,000. Mm -hmm. Which if, if we made those to be minutes, it would be um, 2,187 days. Okay. Which is a symbol of July 1820, right? Just... 7182, it's just in reverse. Okay. So, are both the 10,000 and the 25,000 symbols of time? Well, that's the way we understood it before, though we didn't quite do it in that way. We didn't take them as minutes or anything like that. But it could represent. A, a number of things. Uh, may, there could be different ways to understand the symbol. Okay. So how would you look at that differently? Well, we could divide it into different units of time. 
Well, I find it interesting when you take that 3,150,000 and you make your first division because you want to look, you want to look at the number of minutes. Yeah. You would come up to five or 52,500 minutes. Yeah. Fifty-two thousand five hundred minutes, which is divided into. Let me see. Did I do that right? So fifty-two five hundred minutes. Uh, you have to divide that to find how many hours. Right. Yeah, you'd use twenty-four. So you would have two thousand one eighty-seven point five. Yeah. So that's the two thousand one hundred eighty-seven. I'm just ignoring the point five. Okay. Just saying that the, the, the whole number that we get is a symbol of July 18, 2020. Now, if we do the same thing with the 10,000, mm -hmm. we have 21,000 minutes and 875 hours out of the, the 10,000 reads. Yeah, so yeah, so there's 1,260,000 minutes. We divide that by 60 or, or whatever. Yeah, so 21,000 minutes. We're saying we divide that by 24, we get 875 days. Days, yeah. Is there a representation for 875 days in our line? Um, I don't know. I haven't looked for it. So 875 days divided by... I don't know. You know, it's about two years and four and a half months or five and a half months depends which way you count the months okay I mean it's longer than 777 days so right because what you'd have left over would be 98 days yeah which is two periods of 49 days so I don't know if we could attach it to um i mean if we did 98 98 days after december 25th um so that would be three months what so you go it bring you like to the end of march beginning of april probably beginning of april somewhere could you do it in such a way where you had a period of 49 days and then the 777 days, and then another period of 49 days? Mm, that's possible. So we begin looking at this 10,000 as something that is related to a representation of time. Now we come to Ezekiel 45 verse three, and all of this measure shalt thou measure the length of five and 20,000 and the breadth of 10,000 and in it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. Is this message, as, as we're looking at it right now, of time helping us to understand the walk through the sanctuary? Pointing to what Christ has been doing in the most holy place since its beginning on October 22nd, 1844. 
Well, that's that's the whole point of Ezekiel. So Ezekiel is telling us about the destruction of the temple, both in 586 and 70 AD. And then he's going to talk about the restoration of the temple, and he's going to use all these measurements. And all these measurements we, we've seen, because we've gone through these, that they represent the symbols of this movement. The 525, the 252, uh, the 18720, all of these things are represented in Ezekiel's measurements. Uh, so, so since he's he's showing the symbols that we have used in this movement, um, and not just this movement, but also Adventism, then that's what he must be speaking of. And he can't be talking about a literal temple being built. Okay. Ezekiel 45, 5. And the five and 20,000 of length and the 10,000 of breadth shall also the Levites, the ministers of the house, have for themselves for a position for 20 chambers. So the area or the time, 25,000 by 10,000, is to be divided into 20 chambers, symbolically. Yeah. So if we look at this, we have 10,000 by 25,000. which places us at 250 million reads, right? Mm -hmm. Now we multiply this by the 126 that we're understanding, which takes us to 31 billion, 500 million. And then this is to be divided by 20. Which takes us to 1 billion, 575 million. Mm -hmm. So it's a very large number. If we then take that and divide it as we as we did the original factor, we come out to twenty six million two hundred and fifty thousand. And then we divide that by twenty four, we come out to one million ninety three thousand seven hundred and fifty. So they're all very large numbers that we're dealing with. But we have twenty chambers. With these twenty chambers, How can we interrelate this as a period of time? Well, there's lots of different ways to do it, so I'm not sure necessarily what's the best way. Okay. Now, Angela says that her Bible reads cubits, not reads, but I think the context would be cubits, or, or reads, I mean, in Ezekiel. Um, uh, this is, this is, this Septuagint says that like two of those three chapters so. <clears throat> or four chapters. So, I mean, 
I'd rather go by the correct translation. Sorry yeah. to mess things up for you. <laughs> yeah, it's just it wouldn't make sense because um, based on the context and, and also just the measurements themselves, it w works better as reads rather than cubits. Um, they just chose. So to... you're saying you're saying the Greek tra translators were wrong in this case? Well, because they don't, they, the word is not su supplied, so they're they're just interpreting it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so they're just guessing in that context, but based upon um, the whole context of the measurements starting with Ezekiel chapter 40, talking about that the measuring reed that he's using to measure is six cubits and a hand breadth. Uh, so it's a cubit that's a cubit and a hand breadth. So that makes it 126 inches. Um, when, he, when he measures by cubits, like in chapter 41, they're going to say that it's cubits. And it wouldn't make sense to measure these large distances in cubits. You'd use the cubits for the smaller measurements. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'm glad I brought it up because I'm sure that somebody else would have questioned that. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for bringing it up. But are the the 20 chambers, a representation of two periods of testing. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Why, why would you say two periods of testing? I would just see them as, as, as a way of dividing up this area representing time. I don't know. Well, at the outset of today's study, we were, or I, I had made the presentation that 10,000 men from Naphtali and Zebulun, and I asked the question if this was a test, since 10 is a number that's also applied to a test, if this was a test upon the struggle that is occurring within his habitation. So 20 is two times 10. Mm -hmm. But we have 20 other places and 20 represents the number of years from September 11th to um, well, to you know, 2020, right? So to 2021. So from 2001 to 2021, to the end of our line. In so we're, we're taking this in both a figurative and literal representation. Yeah. Like I can say that 10,000 represents a test, but I don't think 20 would represent two tests. Okay. Any more than 40 represents four tests. That's just, just my thoughts on it. Okay. So I, I would look for a different symbol for 20 than just to divide it by two. All right. Now, Ezekiel 48.9. The oblation that ye shall offer unto the Lord shall be of five and 20,000 in a length and 10,000 in breadth. How can an offering, an oblation, be measured? Well, it could be measured if it was time. Um. So they're just saying that this land, 
the oblation here. So oblation is normally a um, an offering that is poured out, isn't it? Oh, also the heave offering. Right. Okay. So it's not just poured out. There's okay. there's more more ways an oblation can be presented. Okay, I always just think of the oblations as put up. So this is the offering. So this is the lamb that's being offered. That's just again a reference to the to that portion. But the land is then an offering. So the land must have yeah. a different symbol. Well, it's it's the same land that we've been talking about, this portion that's been divided out. Right. So um in in chapter forty five, it's gonna be the same the same portion that's talked about here. So they're dividing this up in some way. We looked at this before. So this is um, yeah, just dividing this into stripes or strips. Now we've had consideration whether this was a a measurement. We've we addressed that this would be a fairly large area if we mm -hmm. took it strictly as measurement. It's going to be a time, I mean, if we're applying time to this, then we need to have a, a little clearer understanding because we have 20, uh, how do we say this? 20 chambers. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I mean, I've puzzled over this before. I don't have any answers right now, other than that I see symbols, like 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 we did when we took the twenty five thousand and and put it into days, using it as minutes. You know, putting it to inches, then changing it into minutes, then changing it into days, and getting that symbol for July 18, twenty twenty. Okay. Ezekiel 48.10. And for them, even for the priests, shall this holy oblation toward the north five and twenty thousand in length, and toward the west ten thousand in breadth, and toward the east 10,000 in breadth, and toward the south, 5 and 20,000 in length, and the sanctuary of the Lord shall be in the midst thereof. What symbols can we see here? Okay, so just one thing. I had taken um, the area and divided it, and I can't remember all the calculations that I did. Um, but I taken the area and I had divided it by the helic, so the the parts of the Hebrew day, twenty five thousand nine hundred and twenty. Right. And I came to a number that was um, uh, two thousand. Uh, 
2,893 days. And then what I did is I added that to that 2,187 days. All right. And I get the number 5080. And 5080 divided by 2 is 2540. So it's almost 2520. But I don't know what that means. I'm just saying that there is these two numbers using either minutes or, or the parts of a Hebrew day for the other one. All I can say is that, you know, we see these symbolizing time. And so how we're going to apply that exactly, I, I, I don't know if we need to, other than to know that uh, we can see that the counting of the people represents time. And we can apply it to, uh, to different spans, okay. both Naphtali and Zebulun will connect us to uh, different points in history, sometimes to the day, sometimes not to the day, sometimes just to the year. Uh, so, so I don't know, know what the answer to that is, what we would have to do to, to bring it all together. If I had like some kind of computer that would do it for me, that'd be nice. But in, in digging through this, we can see that time is being represented by this 10,000 in Ezekiel here. So we can assume that these numbers apply to time in a symbolic fashion. Okay, so cover again your the way that you use the calculation with the helic. Well, I just took that number that we had for um, whatever, it was that really large number. Uh, I can't remember if, which number it was. I think it was I had. Um, so what was the measurement of the area? We had 25,000. Multiplied by 10,000. By 10,000. Multiplied by. 126. 126. Yeah, so I took that number, divided it by the number of helic in a day instead of the number of minutes in a day. Then I get 1,215,277.777. And then um, that I'm going to have to put into, uh, so I'm going to divide that then by, uh, what did I do? Because I, I don't have the, th the it's saved. Um, and I think I just divided it by 360. And that brought you to the 5040? No. So that wasn't the one that I did. Um, no, I can't remember because I don't have it here. I have to go through the calculation again. I can't remember what I was thinking. Um, so... Um, I don't know. I can't remember what I did. Okay, here's what I did. I I took that number of just the without changing it into inches. Okay. I then um, let me see. No, no, I guess that one wasn't with the helix. So let me see here. Uh, no, what I did is I took that area. I took the area without changing it into inches, and I took it as seconds. That's what I did in this one. Uh, there's another one that I did that I got a different number with the helix. Um, so this one I divided by 60 by 60. Uh, by 60 by 24 by three, let me see, by 24 to get, so 60, okay, never mind. I divided it by 60, by 24, by 20, by 60, by 60, by 24. So let me see if that works. Uh, 
Yeah, so I think I just did sec seconds seconds for that. Okay. Yeah, I just did seconds. So it so when I did the area, I just divided it by another sixty, and I never did, I never multiplied it by one twenty six. So I don't know if it's valid or anything, but yeah, I did something else with the helicon. So I have to, that one kind of, I've lost it. Um, but as you, as you said earlier, you came to a, a result of 5040, is that correct? Yeah, adding the two together. Okay. But if we, if that, if that is correct, and we were then to use that as a representation of the 20 chambers. If you take that 5040 and divide it by 20, each chamber okay. would come out with 252. Okay, there you go. Okay, so maybe that's, so, but what we have is symbols. I mean, that's kind of my point, to try to apply this in um, a literal way. Yeah, so we got the 252. So it, it, you know, we don't necessarily have to find some periods or spans of time that match up to these. We can just have the symbols of 2520 in July 18, 2020. I mean, because that's what we did with Ezekiel before. We didn't try to say, well, this is referring to this span of time starting from here and going to there. We weren't using them as time prophecy spans other than that they match the symbols that we have of existing time prophecies. Yeah. Right. So, but, but I think we can with the, the numbering of the people that we can take those things as symbols and also some of them as spans of time. And the one that's interesting to me is the one in Odilio's study um, dealing with Zebulun and Naphtali. Right, because he he just addressed Zebulun. Okay. Because he took this twenty-eight, and then he looked at this, and he saw uh, we got this fifty-seven thousand and four hundred. But when we deal with Naphtali, Naphtali is going to be um, uh, three thousand less. It's fifty-three thousand four hundred. And in our study of Judges, chapter four, it's going to be Zebulun and Naphtali that are called to this battle. Right. right? So, so we must take both of those as representative of something that's related. Right. And the only thing that I can do is I can take his study where he goes back from Zebulun, 57,400 days from July 18th, and that brings him to May 28th or May 23rd, 1863, which is the end of that general conference session where Byington uh, was made the first general conference president. And of course, we can then relate this to the study dealing with the presidents and trying to understand this. But he also was using these, you know, the Lisbon earthquake, uh, the dark day and the falling of the stars. And he had measured the span from the Lisbon earthquake to the falling of the stars as 78 years and 12 days. So that's a symbol of 18720 as well. 20th year, 18th day, 7th month. So, so he has this representation. And I take the falling of the stars in 1980 as significant. And if I count Naphtali from the falling of the stars in 1833, it brings me 197 days short of August 11th, 1980. So it brings me to January 27th, 1980. So it brings me to the year, but not to the month or the day when I use Naphtali. So, but it ties in with his structure. And 197, I mean, if it was 187, that would have been really nice, but it's 10 days short of my birthday, which is 187 days before August 11th. So, so I don't know what that means. I mean, you could say there's a 10 day test in there or something as a symbol to the 187 being added. I don't know. It's just that the numbering of the, the tribes 
it's these it's given is in these round numbers you know all of them are in to the hundreds except one that's to the 50. so so the fact that they're in round numbers i think it brings us close um but i don't know if if you know anything could be proved by it other than it it does tie to our history it ties together the year of the falling of the stars in 1833 and the falling of the stars in 1980, which I already have connected. Okay. So could it be said that Odilio's study is a, is a bit incomplete? Well, yeah, it's incomplete. Yeah, because we need to not just look at Zebulun, we need to look at at least Naphtali. And I already have tied Dan to our history, to our structure, and and Judah. So, so I, you know, in just yesterday, working on it. But I haven't worked with every single, I haven't figured out something for every single tribe. But these are spans of time. And since Odilio showed the first one, we, we can assume that the other ones also are spans of time that connect us to Millerite history, to our history. All right. So Ezekiel 48, 13. And over against the border of the priests, the Levites shall have five and 20,000 in length and 10,000 in breadth. And the length shall be five and twenty thousand, and the breadth ten thousand. It's interesting in the prior verse in forty eight ten that the twenty five thousands are given as representative to north and south. And the east and west are given representation for 10,000. Okay. Because we've already accepted king of the north, king of the south. As also being important at this time. Mm -hmm. 4818. And the residue in length over against the oblation of the holy portion shall be 10,000 eastward and 10,000 westward, and it shall be over against the oblation of the holy portion, and the increase thereof shall be for food unto them that serve the city. Is this food for them that serve the city to be a message based upon chronology? Well, I would think so. What other way can it be represented? I don't think it could be represented any other way. Now, as we look at this a little further, we come now to Daniel 7, verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were open. Here we come to a fourth word it is a fourth word in the chaldean not in hebrew but is related to the hebrew word so we have rebo 10,000 times 10,000 
So when we have 10,000 times 10,000, we are showing a great number. We are showing 100,000. But we could also see this application as a myriad. What is Daniel seeing at this point? Is this not the opening of the judgment? Well, it's definitely the opening of the judgment. Okay. But here, 10,000, well, one is, this is in uh, chapter 7, so. Hmm. It's interesting, it's 7 verse 10, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so they're using Rebo. So they got the thousands is the Aleph Aleph. Right. And then the Rebo Rebo. So the doublings of each of those. So since we have the doubling of each of these, is this a, a further representation of the second angel's message? Well, yeah, I mean, it is. Now, um, now 187, now we often talk about 187, that's a symbol of July 18th. Right. Now 187 is from the first day of the first month to the 10th day of the seventh month. Right. And that's also the number of days from the spring equinox to the autumnal equinox. And 178, we run into quite a bit. And 178, is just the remainder of the year. That is from the, the autumnal equinox to the spring equinox is 178 days. Those two digits are switched to get 365 days in a year. Um, and, and it's interesting that the word judgment is 1780. Um, and this opening of the book of judgment here in Daniel, uh, 710, so the 10th day of the seventh month, which is the 187th day of the year. I mean, time is represented here, is what I'm trying to say. In this verse, it's it's representing time, even though it's, I mean, somebody can say, well, we just have these arbitrary numbering of chapters and verses and the arbitrary numbering of, of Strong's concordance. But the thing is, they exist as just an objective fact, nobody chose them. The fact that they're arbitrary shows that they symbolize, they can symbolize things that we already understand. We, you know, we wouldn't take these verses and find a verse that said, you know, 710 and uh, 178, you know, having the word judgment or whatever the number would be of some word and create a whole doctrine based upon it. And when you see the judgment is set and the book is opened, even the word opened is 666. I mean, it's 6606. But this is the judgment, you know, dealing with the, which we mark as the Sunday law in our lines, right? First day of the first month being 9-11, the 10th day of the seventh month being the Sunday law. With midnight and the midnight cry in between. And you could even argue here that, you know, the thousands, thousands, Aleph, Aleph, Aleph can represent thousands, but it's also the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. 
So that can be the first day of the first month. And the thousands, thousands, or the 10,000 times 10,000 represent representing the midnight cry. Or something like that. I don't know. What else would it be? Well, it would have to be the midnight cry. I'm just saying that the first one representing the first day of the first month. And midnight and the midnight cry, which is a doubling, right? So July 21st and August, or August 15th. And then, of course, the 10th day of the seventh month being the Sunday law. So, so the question, I, I, I mean, I, this is, these last few days have been rather um, scattered, as we've said. But what we're doing is we're trying to grapple with the symbolic use of numbers and how we can use them, something like 10,000. So in the book of Judges, you know, we have this number, number of the army, you know, and, and we just sort of have taken it for granted well, the number 10,000 shows up a lot, and it's just a lot of people. Uh, but the question is, can we use it as a symbol? Can we take uh, Judges 4 and and deal with uh, the number of the, the army that, that's being called to fight this battle as representing time in some way? Not just in, in a symbolic sense, but maybe in some sort of literal sense. So 410 and and 411, these two, which is where we're really stuck on in Judges, we have this 10,000, and then we have all, all these symbols that relate to this message. And so what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to pass it by and just say, well, we don't really know? And we have Zebulun and Naphtali, and we know that Zebulun was used by Odilio on Sabbath, to represent the, the counting of Zebulun from Numbers 2 and 8, to count the span of time from Millerite history or Adventist history, the forming of the Adventist church, to July 18, 2020. So, so I don't think that we can ignore that. We have to dig into this a little bit deeper. But to me, it just seems beyond my reach at the moment to understand everything that's happening here. Well, <clears throat> I see this as a symbol that our Heavenly Father has placed for us to understand. And as we're going through this on the 10,000, all of these pieces are going to come into sharper focus and be placed where they should. Now, I'm not asking that you alone mm -hmm. figure this out. The whole purpose of this study is for us to come together as a group to look at these symbols, to address these symbols, and to see in what manner the symbols can be applied. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we took 10,000 as being actual days, for instance, Right. I mean, we would need to try to figure out a logical place to start that number of days. I mean, and, and we have different places in our line that we could do that and then find out if that number of days ends somewhere that actually, you know, fits with what we understand. Now, um, when we're looking at this, yeah. we have, of course, a fiery stream that issued and came forth from before God. Now you're saying that the thousand thousands are the LF LF. Yeah. And then the LF LF ministered unto him. So we're talking about the the symbol that is used for this is is also considered as the ox head, the first letter. Yeah. And now and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. 
So are we talking 10,000 by 10,000 in terms of time that have stood before God? I don't know. Uh, one thing I can say, 10,000 days. Yes. If we count it from November 9th, 1989, for example, it brings us to March 27th, 2017. Okay. Which is pretty significant. All right. Right, because 2017 is the center, like uh, June 22nd, 2017 is the center of that 777 chiasm. But March 27 is also a part of the structure of that chiasm. Okay. So, so 10,000 days going from November 9th, 1989 to the start of our history, bringing us to a March 27th date, no matter which year it would be in. I think is significant. All right. Any other thought? I'm looking at all this as pieces and I'm not I'm not quite seeing the entire puzzle yet. Mhm. Mm that's that's the way I've seen it is we're seeing something, we know we're starting to put pieces together and we start to see a picture, but we're not really sure about all of the pieces, where they fit. And we're not really quite sure what the picture is yet. We just know that it's forming something. I mean, we, we see quite a bit of the picture of things that we already understood in the past, but they're all coming together. Right. And, and the problem that I have with it which I think a lot of people would, is, is it's rather complex. That is, it, it brings together lots of different threads, lots of different lines um, that we have to be able to keep in our minds in order to see the, the entire picture. So even once we see the picture, I mean, we're going to have to have a way to to show it to others that they can see it. I mean, unless it's just for those digging for it. Yeah. OK. Now, as we've been looking at this, we've covered primarily the portions of, of the Old Testament. Now we begin in the New Testament. Matthew 18, 24. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. So we have another word in the Greek one that is for 10,000 most directly. I don't know how I'd pronounce that, Meroi, but- yeah, I'd have to see the Greek, Meroi, Meroi, Meroi. Okay. Be kind of awkward, but- yeah, my English speaking tongue does not wrap too easily around Greek. Yeah, I always hated Greek. Now, the next verse, we come to Luke 14.31. Now, as we see, both of these are denominated in red. So they are supposed to be the words of the Savior. Oh, what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Here we wind up with two words in the Greek, ka kilias, again 10,000. Why in Matthew 18, 24, is one word sufficient to represent 10,000, 
But in the book of Luke in 1431, we have two words representing 10,000. And since these are in red, we know that the Savior is very careful with what he has said, both then and now. Yeah, well, one, uh, I mean, the first one is um, referring to money. The next one is referring to to people. Okay. So, I mean, there may be a different way you count people and money. Well, especially it's interesting in, in counting the money because it's 10,000 talents. Yeah. So it takes us back to what we were talking about before with the talents. It gives us a, a very direct reference as to the symbol with the talents as to its important with, importance with the talents. Yeah. Yeah, it's just here in this case, these 10,000 talents, the type of word that's used is sort of just, he owed him a large amount of money is kind of what it's saying. If we're going to translate it sort of from their colloquial idiom into ours. All right. Um, we're in Luke 14. Um, this is, you know, a different type of... Uh, context and and again you know i mean numbers have to be used it doesn't mean that every time we see a number that we we can tie that verse together because of the use of that number but here in the context here it's talking about a war war kings going to war against each other and so so these people are, uh, I mean, the context is just way different. I don't know if what we would, this is about people planning. You know, if you, if you read, you know, from the beginning of this section here, uh, maybe, maybe there's something we could draw from it. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, blessed be he that eateth bread in the kingdom of God. Wait, is that where I want it to be? Uh, no, I'm too far. The mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be, be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that, all that, all that behold, behold it begin to mock him. So we could look at this as this message, the laying of the foundation, and the intent is to build a tower. And those that are those that are Christ's disciples that pick up their cross, that forsake all. saying this man began to build and was not able to finish, right? So when we look at Adventism, even just in general, uh, that's sort of what Adventism has done. It hasn't counted the cost, and it hasn't finished the building, and people mock them. And then it says, or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth together whether he be able with 10,000, to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an embassage, or embassage, and desireth conditions of peace. And so likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be by disciple. So, so we have the first one dealing with this building, which doesn't, of course, address the 10,000. But then we have this war. And we have to know whether we're able to win in that war. 
So somebody who only has 10,000 may decide that, you know, he's just going to have peace rather than go to war. He has to consider whether he can win this battle or not. And we see, of course, we're dealing with the 10,000 in the context of judges having to do with a war. So we, we have to forsake all that we have. We have to be able to go into this battle. We have to finish the work of building the tower because we started to lay the foundation. We can still build a plan. Does that, does that make sense? Well, if, if we're not willing to give total commitment, the project will not be completed. Right. And we've seen that many people, when they were mocked, gave up building. Right. Right. So, so we can't. Because we, we should have counted the cost. We should have realized that it it's not about us. We have to forsake all. Our father, mother, wife, children, brethren, sisters, and our own life. And and the re reason why many people turned away from the message is because of these reasons. So do we believe that we can win this battle with 10,000? Are we not in the same position that Barack was? Have we not been given the command of God that this is what we are to be doing? Mm -hmm. So we need to sit down first and consult. And when we consult, we, we should recognize that we should be able to win this battle. Right. We're not going to we're not going to surrender. We should recognize that God has given us the promise. And has shown us that the battle is already decided in our favor. Yeah. So when we come back to this on talents and measurements, we're going to have to consider again Matthew 18, 24. But we're seeing here in 1431 of Luke that we have a decided need for consultation but could we apply that to our need to come together in the upper room yeah i would think so now the number that's given us for the greek word consulteth is 1011 so that's january 11th 2023 i assume the end of Collins' prediction. Well, it's interesting. If, if we were taking that, um, this may have no application, but if that was expressed in base two, 1011, computer language, what would we have? What letter would we come to? Uh, Uh, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know how to do base two calculations quickly. So let me think. Um, oh, Iran says eleven. Okay. So that would be eleven, but that would be what letter of our alphabet? Well, that would be. Uh, Uh, K. Okay. All right. I Maybe just think it, I think it's interesting January 11th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. First Corinthians 4:15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet ye 
have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. What's Paul saying here? For though you have 10,000 different teachers in Christ, yet ye have not many fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Yeah, so this would be like a tutor, usually a servant who is instructed to take the children, a pedagogue. Okay. Uh, the word. So it's, it's interesting to me that the word that's being used there is the same as we were seeing here yeah. in Matthew 18. So as you were pointing out, in Luke, we're dealing with people and Matthew, we're dealing with money. So why is Paul using the reference of money as instructors? Well, well, again, the idea is this is an innumerable amount. So 10,000 here, I mean, they can say, you know, it's 10,000, but it's not, it's not specific. Okay. Right. So if you had, you could translate it. And though you had many instructors in Christ, yet have you not many fathers? And um, now the word many here for fathers um, much so so the idea is a comparison so ten thousand is definitely a lot more than many okay All right so you have less so there's okay. lots of people who are willing to instruct you but not many that are willing to be fathers and so paul's presenting himself as as somebody who cares about them, not just being a, a teacher, a pedagogue, but somebody who actually has concern for them. Okay. So 1 Corinthians 14, 19. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice, I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Yeah, so you're going to have that same word, just many words, which is, which is a number that you really can't count in an unknown tongue. Okay. But he's also, he's using a ratio, too, of five to 10,000. Yeah. He's giving you a number, five words. Not sure why he chooses five words. I think five words is the idea of um, just something that's said that's like a little saying or, or something that's um, like wise, like the five wise. Okay. It's also something more along the lines of brevity as well, is it not? Yeah. Okay. Now, um, it's just interesting here. Uh, okay, so the, so this is a two thousandth of a part of ten thousand, right? Five right. is is two thousandth of a part. So that's kind of interesting if you think of it that way. So it is a ratio of one into 2,000. OK. Now, we come now to the book of Revelation. It's interesting to me that there are two representations being given in this in Revelation. As was discussed a few weeks ago, Revelation is a book that was written 
poorly in the Greek with many Hebrew Hebraisms implied. Mm -hmm. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands. We have these representations both of a myriad, but also of as we had looked out of Jew. Because as Jude gave us in Jude 1.14, and Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, behold, the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints, which is Greek, Three, four, six, one, ten thousand, or a myriad. John was also a very careful writer. He knew that these things would have to be presented in Greek, but Hebrew was something that was more to his comfort level of understanding. Would you agree or disagree? Yeah, he's he's Hebrew. So, because in his his gospel and his letters, he had somebody writing for him into good Greek. So, here again, and I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, angels, beasts, elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000. So we have 10,000 multiplied by 10,000 or a doubling of, of this. But we have a large innumerable number, technically. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing here is, is this kind of reminds me of Daniel 7.10. Okay. Um, because it says thousands, thousands ministered unto, unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. Um, so it's got, it's got the doubling of each of these, just different. It's in Hebrew. Instead of Greek, like in Revelation 5. Revelation 5 what? Because this is Revelation 5.11. Yeah, 5.11. That's what I'm saying. Revelation So as we're coming to the close of our time today, do we see anything further from this with Revelation 5.11 that adds to the pieces of the puzzle that we're trying to currently assemble? Um. You know, I'm looking here at the Peshitta right now. Um, so these words are, I'm trying to find, I don't read Syriac, so, um, what is the Peshitta? 
Uh, that's uh, the Syriac version of the Bible. So many people believe that some of the New Testament was written actually originally in Hebrew or Aramaic. So right. Syriac is Aramaic or Chaldean, same thing. Um, so, I mean, they just have uh, here. So I'm going to try, I'm trying to find the Hebrew because I can read the Hebrew. So they translate it into Hebrew. So I just want to see what words used. All right. Um, so it just takes me a second. Yeah, so they're going to use uh, 10,000 times 10,000. They're going to say Alephi, Alephi. So they're going to use Aleph for 10,000. All right. Uh, um, and then for uh, – and they're, they're going to use uh, Rabaot for the thousand, I think, staying on here. Um, yeah, they go Rabi, uh, so they go uh, for the, okay, so for the 10,000, pardon me, so I'm doing this wrong. So for the 10,000, they go rabo, rabaot, that means 10 thousands. So they don't, they're not doubling the word per se, uh, because the word is 10, and then uh, 10,000, 10 thousands, or 10,000, 10 thousands. So that's 10,000 times 10,000. And then they go aleph, for the thousands of thousands, it's uh, alephi. Alephim, so thousand, thousand thousands, so ten thousand ten thousands, and thousand thousands. But yeah, they're using that uh, Rab and Aleph in 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 in, uh, and they've translated it from from the Aramaic into Hebrew because I can't read the Aramaic script at all. But they translated into Hebrew there. So, uh, so I don't know if that's helpful. Well, but that's all I have. Okay. At this point, we will return to this portion with Revelation to begin our study tomorrow to see how this can be placed with the other symbols that, that we have before we go on to look at this on the 10,000s that are also listed in the Bible. Yeah, I'm looking at the Aramaic here, and it just, yeah. it doesn't put the plural form uh, for the second Rab. Okay. And both in the singular, uh, but they do for the... Uh, the thousands ones, the Aleph. I'm just trying to figure out this script here, but they, they do have a plural ending there. So, okay. Okay. Sorry about that. But no, no, don't be sorry. Okay. Are there any other comments or questions today? Okay, shall we close with prayer? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for these many examples with which we need to consider. We thank you, Father, for this time that you are granting us to wrestle with these words so that we might more clearly understand that which you would have us to address at this time in Earth's history. Direct us now through this day. Help us, Father, for we need you. Everything that we do is to be done to your glory. 
we need your guidance so that this may be so. Be with us now, each one. Show us that that you would have us to do and how you would have us to proceed. Thank you for those that have attended today's meeting. Thank you for those that have participated. Be with us now in all things. For this, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.